sport doesn't only help you how to catch a ball or how to hit the ball when it comes to the good stuff. Sport teaches a lot of people discipline that you can take also and implement it. One day when you become a parent, you can take that thing and implement it. Not everyone, not everyone is going to be a zombie destiny. Not everyone is going to be a tobacco. Not everyone is going to be a prime But I'll tell you one thing. If you've got what it takes, the discipline, you can have a great family, where your kids are around, they're going to respect you. The best important life, the best important life, one of the best, actually one of the best important life, is discipline. Discipline when you've only got one shot to train with. But you've got three training sessions a week. Discipline in sport, you can go and work with that shot. When it's dirty, you go at home, fasting, you watch the shot, and you hang in a game. That's a discipline that sport does. And you might think, okay, it's a small thing, trust me. In future, that discipline is gonna teach you a lot. And Tobella, very good. Yeah. What you guys are doing with your stakeholders is the foundation in life. What the kids, what the young ones, from the township, from the disadvantaged areas, this is exactly the foundation they need. And when you talk about life, we can have the nicest hotel, we can have the nicest house, but what is the most important thing in the house for your hotel? It's the foundation. So what you guys are giving these young ones is exactly the foundation these young ones they need for life. As you can see our country, I'm not gonna say much about it, as you can see our country, we've got a lot of challenges. But people, they're so quick on social networks to view their stuff. People on TV when they're watching, they always criticize you. But where you are sitting, what are you doing? What change are you doing? So we as the parents, we as the teachers, we as the elders, we need to make sure that we create an opportunity for the young ones. Give them hope, give them life. I went through a similar program back in the days when I was young. It was run by Temer Luba, one of the big names in Zimbabwe back in the days in the township. And I, I would love to believe also currently is a well-known uh, man. We were we had a, a development program that was called uh, Sibonose, which is Sibonose, one of all of the legends of the game. Uh, I was so fortunate enough at that young age to get that kind of what? of a support from that program, which is exactly what Kulasana Sport Development is doing now in the Yamas. It was difficult for me to go to training sessions, but one thing about me, my mom will know, we will always fight about it. After school, I'm going to put my bag there, I'm going to take now my shorts, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to run to the training session. My mom never used to like it, but it was me. I was so passionate at the young age about sport, I used to love sport. One thing that I regret in life, no matter what, I don't, I don't like regretting myself. One thing about me, we used to fight with my mom, one to come and watch me when I'm playing other things. I went to Stephen Masula Primary School, it's also in Brighton. So my mom would always say to me, I'm gonna come and watch you, and I would fight with my mom. I say, I don't want you, mom, come and watch me. Because of back in the days in the township, when you are a mother's baby, people will say you are soft. <laughs> but that is something that I miss in life. After went, going through professional, I look back and I regret myself for saying no to my mom. But this one day, this one day, she said, no, she's not going to come and watch. But while I was playing, she surprised me. I saw her walking inside the gate. Because the rugby field is close to the gate, so she walked in. She never gave me any, 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 any option about it. She decided she was going to come on that day. She only watched one rugby game that I played. Mm. Out of all the games that I played, she only watched one. But that image, when she walked inside the gate, that image is going to stay forever. Mm. So that is something that my mom left me with. So with everything she has done in my life, I still got the respect for that lady. Wherever I go, even today when I pray, I pray and I thank God for the opportunity and the time that He gave me with my mom. And then my message now, my message that I want to send across to the coaches, 
There's always a way. There's always a choice. I've been to hell. I've been to tough times. But I've always looked for the bright side. Yes. Even if I'm going through challenges in life. I've lost my mom at the age of 17. I was in the bush. Ten days in the bush, I was there. When I left home, my mom was sick. But when the elders came in to visit the bush, and they were wearing jackets and stuff, and then I had a feeling of something. I started to shake. And then they came. We as tossers, you guys know what, what, what's happening in the bush. So after everything that I was going through in the bush, then the elders came to visit and said, you know what, we want to speak to you. And then they told my friends they must go and sit in their own houses. Then I went to my house, and then the elders came to me and they told me that day, uh, your mom is late. And I'm telling you now, the whole world around me stopped. The whole world stopped, and my mind, I don't know where it went to. So I was just sitting there, whatever they were saying, after, after they said my mom was late, I didn't hear what happened after. So they started to console me and trying to keep me strong and stuff, but I didn't hear whatever they said after that. Then when they left, it was me and the world. Then I asked myself a question when I was there. Where to from here? And I'll be honest, I see a lot of youngsters out in the township where they say, no, they don't, have a, they don't have a choice. They have to go through this way. And I look at them and say, geez, if I can tell you the walk that I've walked, you wouldn't say the same. So after that day, one thing, once again, that I was so fortunate, uh, that I will tell you, the biggest dream as a youngster, as a toss alone, is when you come back from the bush and you walk inside your house and you see the tears in your mom's eyes. That is what we dream of as a youngster. So, after losing that dream, I'm not going to see my mom again. What do I do about life? Do I give up? Or do I take the situation where I'm facing and turn it the other way around and give you strength to make sure that I focus forward in life? So I had a choice to make. It's either I give up and I follow all the other kids in the township. I go and do drugs, or I can go and do housebreaking and stuff. But I'll be honest with you now. I've never touched cigarette. I've never touched drugs. I've never committed a crime where I went to go and steal for someone else. So I didn't go his way. I didn't look for his way to achieve something in life. And then I decided, you know what? There was light on the other side, which is rubber. There was light, and rubber for me gave me everything that I've got now today. Yes. From a three room house, I've got now my own house in the bridge. I provide for my family. I'm not trying to show off to say I've, 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 I've got, I don't have money. But one thing that makes me go to bed at night and sleep peacefully is the fact that in a three room house, where I can provide for my family. And that is everything that the sport has provided for me. So for Kula Sande, what you guys are doing to these young kids, you are preparing them to be the leaders of tomorrow. This is exactly what the world needs at the moment. Make the change in the second way you are around. We are not going to change the whole world, but if I can change a young one to give him hope, that is exactly what the sport needs. So to the stakeholders, to the coaches, to be able to They don't have what's that, you know. I didn't know you well. I didn't know you well. But after doing my research, after doing my research, surely there's going to be both between me and you. And this is not about us. It's not about us. Like I said to you, my life is not about me anymore. The funniest thing about me as a player I used to play sevens, like the uh, like program director said earlier on. I used to play sevens. But my holidays, when I come back home, I'll come back at home. Whenever a school teacher calls me, please come and help our young ones. There's a school teacher there, um, Mr. Peters. That old man used to call me, like, when I come back on holiday, this old man will call me, stick. 
please, maybe go to a service tournament and playing in your against great media and Jalal Pinar. I wouldn't hesitate. I said, okay, it's fine. Give me two days or three days with your team. I will help them. It temporarily said that year when they played against great. They beat great, they beat Dalek I think they also beat Mio in the final. Toy Banda was playing there, right? Toy Banda was playing there as a young kid. That boy now is in the, in the super of squad for the kids. That is, what, that is what life is all about. What can we do for the young kids? So, Tobela and your team, and the stakeholders around, and to the media, which is the funny thing about the media is that most of the guys in PE, they're my good friends. And you don't find that combination where a coach can be a good friend with the media. But I know to find my corners when it comes to the guys around the PE, and they also know to find the corners around me. So, to the media, also once again, to be part of this occasion, to make sure that you guys are going to spread the word there. Whatever that formula is trying to achieve, you guys.